Welcome to another edition of Forecast Lab. In the weather today, patterns continue to behave like May in the South, but the northern states enjoying a more typical March. The world's hot spot? Well, it's no longer Australia. We're looking at Central Africa now, the capital of Chad, Anjamena, 112 degrees. That's just a quick look at one spot in the capital city. And they've had a heat wave going on there over the past week. Temperatures well above 100 just several hours ago. And there is the city that has the record 111 at the time of this map, but they held that temperature for four hours. A cold wave continues for northern Canada down to minus 41 at Mold Bay. And that's the record for today outside of Antarctica, where they had minus 74 at the South Pole. Here in the U.S. this evening, deep southerly flow coming up from the western Gulf, reaching all the way up towards Sioux Falls. A new cold front coming down from Canada, bringing some wintry weather conditions in North Dakota, where they have winter weather advisories and a small winter storm warning around Minot. These are the forecast highs around the U.S. this afternoon. This is from National Weather Service forecasters. You can see 80s all the way up towards Austin, Lufkin, and even up towards Tyler. And 60s and 70s, well up north towards Kansas City and Louisville. And up in North Dakota, temperatures only in the teens for highs. And with a profound absence of Arctic air across the U.S., it's been replaced by tropical air, a plume of 1.5-inch precipitable water extending up along the Gulf Stream all the way to Long Island, and return flow getting reestablished in Texas. And we will increase that moisture tomorrow into Friday, coming up to 1.5 to 2-inch precipitable water. And a pretty good slug on the west coast, Southern California, getting about half an inch to 1 inch of precipitable water. The 250 millibar chart does show a combined subtropical and polar front jet from Arizona to Oklahoma, looking at about 140, 150 knots on that. The 500 millibar chart does uncover the stronger dynamics. A jet max across North Dakota that places the divergent left front quadrant across Winnipeg, where they have snowfall warnings for 4 to 8 inches of snow. Strong dynamics on the west coast, most of the lift, focused on Southern California, and that will move inland tonight and tomorrow. And then a exiting wave across the Carolinas, the upper motion field with that, not quite as strong. The 700 millibar chart does reveal the mid-level fronts, cold front through the Dakotas, warm front down towards Minneapolis, and a couple of other frontal systems around the country running something like that, and probably a weak one on the east coast, about like that. At 850 millibars, most of the west coast activity obscured by mountains, but we do see the Canadian front surging south through South Dakota somewhere in here. There's the warm front, and later tonight the low-level jet will get established once again. So that's going to be 6 in the morning, 30 knot flow through DFW, and then for Thursday night, the stronger dynamics shift eastward. And by midday on Friday, get getting 40 knots at Jackson, so there could be some potential here for severe weather. And looking at the mid-level flow, well, it is progressive. We don't see much blocking going on across North America. That will change around the 16th, but for now, it is split up into a couple of bands, South Stream across the southern U.S., North Stream across the northern U.S., and we've got the Southern Arctic Front up there in the Northwest Territories and Nunavut. And a strong springtime system moving up into the northeastern U.S. can definitely pick out the upper level low right there. The surface low is further east, and that's very typical of a bear clinic system. Large area of isentropic lift, dynamic lift, and of course moisture advection working up northward along the coast. And as we mentioned, the precipitable water has been running as high as 1.5 inch. There's a quick look at the water vapor imagery the dry slot well to the south, moving into southwestern Virginia. However, we do have a flood watch all throughout the coastal northeast from Maine 
all the way down through New York City and into central New Jersey. In the southeastern U.S., well, we get a better look at that dry slot wrapping around into South Carolina, and there's the cold core low right there east of Atlanta. There's the visible imagery. We have a flood watch in parts of northeastern North Carolina, some areas getting as high as six inches of rain. And we do have a SPC marginal risk for severe storms in coastal South Carolina, close to that cold core low, in a separate area down along the tail end of that front around Miami and Fort Lauderdale. The southern plains priming up for the approach of another weather system. You can see that we're in between those systems because we've got northerly flow in Alabama and the start of southerly flow in Texas that implies ridging around Arkansas and Louisiana. We do have an SPC marginal risk for severe storms from far southeastern Oklahoma through Sherman, Fort Worth, and Abilene, San Angelo. We are expecting increasing risks for severe storms tomorrow and into Friday for much of Texas. But for now, high wind warnings in the mountains of far west Texas. Until later tonight, winds could be gusting up to 75 miles an hour there. And we do have fire weather watches and red flag warnings all across eastern New Mexico and the area west of Lubbock for today and Thursday. There's a look at the northern plains, the tail end of that front, moving through South Dakota and Nebraska, but just not much moisture to get storms going. And the conditions are still a little bit on the cool side. We do have those winter weather advisories up to the north. And then as we get the approach of the upper trough coming in from the Pacific, conditions will go downhill in the Rockies. Winter storm watch for the Front Range Mountains Thursday and Friday right in here, uh, mostly above 8,000 feet, looking for about 3 to 11 inches of snow. And that transitions into a winter storm warning in Wyoming. And that's along Interstate 80 west of Cheyenne, where 5 to 8 inches of snow are likely. And we'll just shift that window well to the west and look at California because we've got that upper level low approaching the coast. Bands of precipitation moving into the Los Angeles area. And there's a look at the radar composite and the surface chart. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s down in the valley floors, but quite a bit of precip. And because of terrain blocking, we can't pick up all of that precip, but it almost definitely exists up there in the mountains north of Santa Barbara. And SPC is looking for the possibility of thunderstorms all the way from San Diego up to San Francisco and Sacramento. And a winter weather advisory in the higher elevations near Los Angeles, above 4,500 feet, could be two inches of snow and higher amounts in the higher elevations. That includes Big Bear, Pyramid Lake, and the I-5 passes. And the northwestern U.S. looking pretty good today, but they are going to be battered by a series of atmospheric rivers as we go into later this week. Here's the integrated vapor transport looking pretty good right now. But as we go into Thursday and Friday, another surge coming into Washington and Oregon. So this is going to be Friday night. So let's see how things work out on that surface chart. We do have a continued bear clinic zone across Texas. Lots of thickness lines through that area, and those connect back up into the Baja California area. So that Pacific system will work with that to some extent. In the northeastern U.S., there goes our weather system around midnight, passing New York City and passing Boston tomorrow morning. More cold Canadian air coming down. A very meager push, only 1028 millibars with that surface anticyclone and our Pacific system losing definition as it crosses the Rockies. Then going into tomorrow, we're starting to see the appearance of a dry line. So I kind of transitioned this into a dry line by evening. There it is. And the surface system, it's really hard to pick that out, probably somewhere in here. And meanwhile, the Canadian air mass moves through Nebraska. We get some upslope flow, some upper dynamics, and those are producing some snow in the North Platte area. For tomorrow evening, we will see some storms across the DFW Waco area. That's a little bit indeterminate right now, and more activity up there in the Kansas City, St. Louis area. Then for Friday morning, things start shifting east. The cold Canadian air moves into the panhandles in Oklahoma. So by the start of the weekend, we're looking like this. Frontal system from Chicago to Texarkana, 
cold air sweeping down through the Great Plains, and strong warm advection in the central Gulf Coast region. So that these areas of storms probably have to keep an eye on that for Friday and Saturday. Then going into next week for Sunday, a lot of turbulent weather there in the northeastern U.S., couple of weak systems moving across the western states into the middle of next week and possibly some action there in Texas for Friday. More storms, kind of a early spring type of weather event. You can see very deep flow up off the Gulf, so very likely some high precipitable water once again. So we could be looking at either severe weather or flood problems. And that's about all we have for that run, so I think we're pretty much done with winter at least that's the way it seems, except up there in the Great Lakes region. And that's about all we have for this evening, but I'll go ahead and leave you with that Pacific weather analysis. These two systems will be making their way onto the West Coast. There's the Canadian view, getting some of that wintry weather around Winnipeg and Kenora, and also some problems in the Maritimes. Looking at heavy rainfall in Nova Scotia, some freezing rain possible around Prince Edward Island, and snow up to 12 to 20 inches possible from St. John's westward. And there's a look at the Atlantic, another weather system heading for the UK once again, most of the western part of Europe under warm advection. And it is a quiet weather day as we head into spring, no watches. No storm reports and no mesoscale discussions. Some of the first possibilities for convection will come later tonight. You can see up there in the Red River region, Sherman, Paris, the HRW model going for convection on the nose of that low-level jet. The convection during the day tomorrow, that's pretty indeterminate. Looks like kind of a weak boundary through here and weakly capped air and could see numerous cells going up around Dallas, Fort Worth, Gainesville, back along Interstate 20. Then as we get afternoon heating, a vast increase in convection near and south of Dallas-Fort Worth. So here's where we could see a window of severe weather, maybe in this region right there. Then during the overnight hours, the low-level jet shifts to the east. However, a couple of the models going for some redevelopment through here and possibly a few discrete cells in this region. So we could have some activity in East Texas through Friday morning. And then things will shift eastward. Then we'll be dealing with that moisture nose there in Louisiana, 1.5 inch precipitable water. And that's getting beyond the range of predictability in the mesoscale. That's 48 hours out. So we'll just have to check back in on that on Friday. And that will be all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you enjoyed it and found it educational. We'll be back for another edition on Friday. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening and Thursday, and we'll see you in a couple days. Bye-bye.